So, first time playing Octopath Traveler. Obviously, the visuals, very stunning. Beautiful throwback to the Super Nintendo JRPGs that Square Enix was making, Final Fantasy 4, 5, and 6, but with um, more three-dimensional looking areas and some really nice lighting effects. Some interesting sort of depth of field stuff going on that not everybody is a fan of, but so far has not annoyed me at all. The combat system, traditional turn-based JRPG, but it does a couple things I really like. First off, you see who is going to, who has the next turn. And there's a, a system where you need to hit them enough times to bring their shield down, which will stun them. And then you can really wallop them with something else. And then each time you do an action, you build up a, a BP point, which you can assign at any time. And you can have a maximum of like four or five of these BP points, and you can load up any of your actions to make it a super action with those bp points so that is there's a lot of sort of like open-ended strategy there and it feels very fast paced it feels like you can cycle through the, the menus for the different combat actions pretty quickly and intuitively this character summons different beasts and you can collect them sort of pokemon style as you go through uh, so far, the I've only died once, and that was in an area that I went to that felt like maybe it was trying to gate me off of not going into right away. I did really enjoy the boss battle. I feel like uh, you can kind of create your own combos where you're thinking of different ways to reduce their their shield attacks so that you can really whack them and stun them. And it's really, really satisfying to stun the different enemies and try to kill them, especially with them not even landing a blow. It would be nice, I mentioned earlier, as if if it would remember that because you run into the same enemies quite a bit so if you've if you've already demonstrated that you can easily dispatch a certain type of enemy by hitting them with this one thing that stuns them and then you load up that extra bp point that you got from that turn and then whack them and they don't even touch you, and you if you've done that like three to five times i think it should just let you auto kill them and then with the the downside of like not getting any experience points for it or money or whatever so that you couldn't just kind of run around and uh, and grind that way. But just to kind of skip the battles. Or maybe like clear out certain areas. So there's only so much experience to get in a certain area. But then once you've cleared that area out. Then you can feel free to explore and walk back and forth. Without triggering a random encounter. Because random encounters can be real tedious. Anyway the story. I think they do a good job of. In each of the two stories we've seen so far. Octopath Traveler has eight different characters. We, we pick one character and we start off and we see their whole opening introduction. What's going on with uh, your hunter character's master and and her protecting this this village in the forest and doing some hunting and then having to leave to find him. And then it shows you the map. There's the seven other characters. You can choose which direction you go. It seems It doesn't seem super clear how I'm supposed to get to the town where the master is, but it does feel like you can go either left or right and kind of circle your way down through the map so the choice ended up being do you want to go left or do you want to go right and you can see clearly on the map that this character Ophelia was to the right and there was another character to the left Therion I think he's the I think he's like a thief or something but Ophelia looked maybe more interesting I don't know Therion looked like a bit of a rascal or a bit of an annoying rascal but maybe he would have been interesting too the stories are a little bit long winded um, and the hunter's way of speaking in this kind of like old English style is a bit irritating but only the main story parts are voiced so it's not too bad the rest of it you can kind of read in your own way it was cool that they let you also choose the uh, the subs and the dubs in the language for that so so far I'm pretty intrigued by it I'm, I'm surprised by how much I like the combat usually in JRPGs especially when they're sticking to this older form of combat it's either going to be boring or tedious or challenging and in a game like persona 4 and 5 they force you to use different elements if to have any kind of effectiveness in combat if you're fighting a you know a wind enemy you have to use you know the opposite of that and and that kind of gives the illusion of strategy but it also means that there's only one way to do it and i think that it's nicer when a game can reward a bit of creativity which is what i really enjoyed for the I guess you could call it spiritual successor project triangle strategy, even though that was made by different developers. Doesn't have any of the same story, but it has the exact same visual style and was published by Square and also debuted on the Nintendo Switch. 
And I do tend to like that combat where there's a bit more movement and you're working, a, you're working around like, it's very strategic, very like chess-like, you know, you want to guard your flanks and um, more like a, a banner saga, that kind of game. But uh, so far, this combat has been way more interesting than I thought it was going to be. The visuals and the music are, are, the visuals are as great as I'd seen. The music is even better than I thought. And I think the stories, they're a little bit slow to get started because they have to front load so many backstories all the time. And sometimes I wish they could do a bit more with, with the gameplay, you know, just to feel a bit more uh, involved rather than, okay, now we're going to sit back and watch quite a bit. But they did allow you to do quite, quite a bit of gameplay before interacting with this character and seeing another introduction. It'll be interesting to see how they handle the pacing of it. But so far, so good. And it's free on Game Pass, so why not give it a try? Octopath Traveler, those are my thoughts so far.